Hey guys, today we're gonna replace the rubber water impeller pump inside an outboard engine. This boat is a 1984 Thundercraft bow rider and the engine is a 1989 Mercury three cylinder, two cycle engine. Boats are cooled by the water that you're driving in. So there's a little rubber pump that sucks the water up, pumps it through the engine and spits it out. And today we're gonna replace that pump. Okay, the lower unit, when you unbolt it, it slides down from the motor, which means I have to get the battery and install it so that I can trim the motor up so the bottom part will slide out. So there's four bolts here, here, and here and here. They are 16 millimeters or 5 eighths which is different from a lot of the newer motors and then there's a 15 millimeter right here so i'm going to back those out but not fully unscrew them and then i'm going to try to tap this loose It's tough. So I backed out the four screws about a half an inch, but I'm leaving them threaded in. So now I'm gonna to try to tap this loose with a rubber mallet. And if it comes loose, it's not gonna fall off the motor because it's still bolted up. This is a rubber mallet, not a metal hammer. If you hit this with a metal hammer, you'll probably break it. But if I'm just tapping it with this, you can see it slowly opening up the gap where this will slide out. Okay, I tapped away at it and you can see daylight through the split right there. That's this lower unit lowering out. So now I'm gonna remove the bolts entirely and I'm gonna try to physically pull the lower part of the engine right out. Okay, now I'm just gonna try to grab the lower unit and yank it out. I've never done this before, so I don't know how easy it's gonna remove. So I might have to tap it again with the hammer, uh, but it might just slide right out. We'll see. Oh, yeah, it came out easy. All right, now I'm gonna take it inside and take a closer look at it. Okay, we're on the workbench and this enclosure right here is the part that contains the pump. So I'm gonna take that cover off and see how the rubber impeller is doing. I expect it's gonna be in pretty rough shape. fell out all right there's what the plate looks like once you take the impeller off and this is what the impeller looks like when it's still in the housing and this is what the impeller looks like once you remove it and the interesting thing about this is that it looks perfect it doesn't look damaged or worn out at all i'm still going to replace it since that's what i'm here to do and they're very cheap 
but that means I'm going to have to take a closer look at the engine. I guess my problem was clogged up waterways up in the engine, but I don't know. I'll have to take a closer look. But if you're just watching this video to know how to replace the impeller, this is still the process to do it with. Okay, now I'm just gonna clean the cover because it's a little dirty. It's covered in years and years of gunk, actually decades of gunk, technically. All right, it's nice and clean. So I'm gonna put a really thin film of grease marine grease just around the inside where the impeller contacts the case that grease is going to get washed away in no time once i'm using the boat but it'll just help reassembly and it'll help that very first time i start it up and i'm just going to do the very very thin coating so i'm just going to put a little blob on there or two and just smear it around as thin as i can Okay, now we're gonna put the new impeller in the housing. It spins clockwise, and because this is upside down, that means it's gonna spin counterclockwise. So we have to kind of smush it in there. It would be nice if my hand wasn't blocking your view. All I'm doing here is rotating the impeller while I push down a little bit, and it slips right Ooh. into the housing. So now, if you look at it this way, it's spinning clockwise. So the impeller and the housing slide down the axle shaft and go on here. So I'm gonna clean off this whole plate, clean off this stuff. Then I'm gonna replace it with a brand new gasket that I bought when I bought the impeller. You know what, this piece comes off, so I'm just gonna take it off and clean it. Okay, I cleaned up the plate as much as I could. So when you're normally doing this, you don't have to replace the gaskets. You don't even have to take this plate out and usually the gasket for the cover of the water pump is still good. But because this hasn't been done in a very long time, I'm replacing both of these gaskets too. So the plate has one side where all the edges are rounded and smooth, and then one side where all the edges are rough. So the rough side goes down, the smooth side goes up, and then the rubber impeller is rotating on top of the smooth side so it doesn't get torn up. Okay, I'm gonna start with the lower gasket and the gasket plate, or the water pump plate. So if you look close right here, part of this shaft is flat and that is for this key. It sticks into that flat spot and then a notch on the key slides into the notch on the impeller and that's how it spins. So I'm gonna put a little smear of grease right there just so that the key will actually stick in. And I'm also gonna put a very light film of grease on the plate itself where the impeller touches just so that it's easy to spin the first time around. So I have the new gasket for the cover for the water pump and this is important. It's not perfectly symmetrical so it doesn't really fit. It almost fits one way but not quite. If you flip it over the other way, it fits perfectly. So make sure it fits in there just right. So the impeller inside the housing spins clockwise. So if you flip it upside down, that means it spins in there counterclockwise to get it in. So if you're looking from the bottom into the housing, it's spinning counterclockwise from that point of view. So now I'm gonna line up the notch a little bit and then I'm gonna slide it on. Okay, so the gasket's in place, so I'm going to slide it on the axle shaft, and then I'm going to twist it just a little bit to line up this keyhole with the key, and I'm going to make sure that the gasket stays on there. There we go. So I started having the lower unit in a milk crate to work on it, and that kind of worked, but it actually works a little better putting it inside the barrel like this. I don't know if it would stay in if you didn't have that hydrofoil fin on the back, but it seems to be staying right now and it doesn't distort the barrel too much. So I'm gonna leave it like this while I finish working on it. So the housing is held on by four 10 millimeter bolts. So I'm gonna take those now and just put a little thin film of grease on the threads so they don't corrode. And I'm gonna put all four of those in.
Now I'm just going to tighten those down. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do before I reinstall this is put some grease along the splines at the top of the shaft. Other people have said when you do this, make sure you don't put grease on the top. I have no idea why they say that, but I'm going to say it and I'm going to do it even though I don't know why. So don't get grease on the top, only on the sides where the splines are. This is where this will connect to the crankshaft of the engine. Okay, just to recap, I've replaced the impeller inside the housing. If you're doing this every year or every couple of years, that should be all you need to do. In my case, I also replaced the gasket that goes between the housing and the plate. And I also replaced the gasket that goes between the plate and the actual body of the lower unit. You shouldn't need to do those all the time, but mine were in rough shape, so I did it. All right, all set. Everything's done here, so time to reinstall this on the boat. All right, reassembling is a little tricky because you have to hold the lower unit into the engine while you're also bolting it in place. I'm going to do the same thing I did for the bolts around the housing of the impeller. I'm going to put a little smear of grease on each bolt just to make sure they don't corrode in place. There's four bolts plus that fifth nut. I'm having a little trouble getting the lower unit to seat fully inside the motor. So what I'm gonna do is jam it up there as far as it will go and then put the jack under it so I can support the weight of the lower unit with the jack. I'm not gonna use the pressure from the jack to actually jam it up there because that will easily lift the boat up, no problem. I'm just gonna try to use the jack to keep it you know, within an inch or so. So when I try to get it to fit, I'm not supporting the whole weight of the lower unit myself because it gets heavy really quickly. I use the jack and the 2x4 to make a lever that puts a little bit of pressure up on the motor and then I go to the throttle and I put it in gear and out of gear and that allows the lower unit to slip up into place. Don't forget the fifth bolt down underneath. All right, that's the reassembly. It was definitely tough to get it back together, probably partly because the motor's so old, but eventually it got there. So now I'm gonna clean everything up here and start it up and make sure that it works. All right.
right, it's working pretty good, but starting it up in the driveway is kind of a lame way to test it. So let me come up with a better way to test it. All right, all finished. That's how you replace the water pump impeller in an old school Mercury outboard motor. It really wasn't too bad at all. There are maybe eight volts or so. Um, the only trouble I had was getting the lower unit to seat back up into the motor. Uh, I had to work at it a bit, but it got there eventually. All right, I hope you found this video helpful. See you later. Whoa.